Hi everybody, welcome uh, back to uh, Air Venture 2021. It's a beautiful sunny morning. Thank God for that. I'm Mark Cook. This is Tom Wilson. Hey, he got it right. I love it. Yeah, so good. yesterday morning started with a lot of rain. Uh, we got through that, and it was uh, kind of cool for a while. Yeah. Then uh, then it heated up because you know it's the Midwest. Uh, but it was a great day. It was seemed really busy to me. To you too. Yep, absolutely. Uh, had a time had time to spend with uh, a few of the vendors in the, uh, the booths. Talked to um, uh, the uh, Aero LEDs people with the new Equinox landing light. Uh, they're working on a couple of versions of that. And the cool part about it is it has two sets of LEDs, and one is designed as a landing light, the other is a taxi light. So it has sort of a broad spread, uh, so you can see in front of the airplane. Uh, currently, they have a 24 volt uh, version. Currently, that's an electrical jug. In case you didn't Positively. catch that. Positively. All yeah. right, we're on. Uh, we're definitely got a, a cell going here. But uh, they're going to have a 12 volt ver version coming up. Uh, we did a little video on that. Uh, had a chance to talk to the Dynon people. There's some new software that allows a twin engine airplane to have overlaying uh, needles, sort of like you'd see in a you know Baron or something right. like that. Uh, it's a nice addition because they used to have to have two separate screens if you had, say, an air cam or something like that. Save a twin velocity, right? Yeah. right? So you uh, you'd save some panel space. Uh, and then uh, you know walked around the grounds just a little bit. And uh, also talked to uh, TCW Tech. Now, those are the guys who make uh, backup battery systems, and they just got an STC uh, for their systems in for, uh, I think, a wide variety of airplanes, but it's a nice way to have a backup power supply. Now, the experimental crowd's like, well, why do we care about an STC? The interesting thing to me is they had to make some very small changes to it to uh, meet the TSO, and one of those was a little battery heater, and apparently there's some piece of the TSO that says, you have to have the battery be able to charge or not charge below a certain temperature. It's like 25 degrees below, and it's. I'm thinking this is in the cockpit, and if it's 25 below, I'm not in the cockpit at the same time, at least not for long. No. So, uh, but the interesting thing to me also is that they're building this on the same line, so it's essentially the same product. Very, very minor changes from the TSO version to the experimental version, which is a good example of the the quality of this particular product. So. That, those are sort of the highlights for product stuff that I saw yesterday. What did, what did you see that was interesting, Tom? Well, big news was from uh, Gammy with their announcement of the G100 unleaded. It's so difficult to type UL after 100. Yeah. You always want to go LL. Right. But uh, so what the technicality is that they got an STC for some light combing powered Cessnas. But uh, this is the fuel nozzles nose coming under the hangar door yeah. uh, because the expectation is that everything is going to be covered. Any piston engine will be eventually covered probably within a year. So it's a game changer. There's a lot of questions. It, it is a drop-in uh, replacement fuel. Uh, the detonation characteristics are at least equal to, if not better, than 100 low lead. It was tested on a 380 horsepower turbocharged 550. Uh, the FAA has been looking at it all part of the process. Um, you know, it's all singing, all dancing. Of course, the question everybody has is how much. It's 60 to 85 cents a gallon more, depending. Av, Av fuel will be the distributor. Yeah. And, uh, of course, then all the questions begin. You know, uh, it's got to be a separate tank. Uh, yeah. you know, all sorts of distribution questions. Those remain to be seen, but uh, the industry has been looking for an unleaded fuel for a long time it's here and i think we're going to see a lot of those things work themselves out i mean the final price uh distribution issues i mean years ago obviously we had two different kinds of fuel at a lot of airports we had 80 and then we had 100 and the consolidation of the tankage uh has made it more difficult to have parallel fuels at a lot of airports uh, but you know there's a lot of there's a, a, a big global push to get rid of the lead it's huge uh and honestly if we get beyond sort of the, that aspect of it our engines, if they could have the same octane, would be happier without lead. Absolutely. Yeah, there, there are some significant ramifications, especially on the oil. Yeah. Uh, there's so much damage done to the oil by the lead. Yeah. And uh, they're thinking you could perhaps double your oil change intervals, and we could move to a synthetic oil. Right. Which we the lead does not allow. Right. So it would be interesting to see. I mean, I think the, the takeaway from that is it looks to be a fuel that works. Uh, and I've seen some of the same detonation data you've had, and they this poor TSIO 550 Continental, <laughs> wow, they really worked that thing hard, and uh, it looks like the Gammy fuel really worked well in it. So yeah, 
Good. What Thanks. else? What else did you see? Uh, the sexiest block of wood at Air Venture <laughs> is the. Uh, did it say Tom? <laughs> was it? Was it? <laughs> no, no, no. It's down at the Turb Aero booth, and uh, they, they're showing a mock-up of a, a clean sheet design turbine engine. They're uh, again another game changer in, in the making, perhaps, potentially, and uh, they're looking at uh, starting at the 200 horsepower level mm -hmm. with a, a free turbine, uh, mm -hmm. like a PT6. It breathes from the back and goes forward. Mm -hmm. Their secret little weapon is a thing called a recuperator, and they're basically exchanging some of the exhaust heat into the intake heat mm -hmm. uh, to increase combustion efficiency. They're thinking that they can get it to within one and a half gallons an hour of the same fuel burn as a uh, a piston engine of the same horsepower. Wow! So, their 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 calculus shows that they're narrowing the price gap yeah. of of operation. Of course, the initial cost of eighty thousand dollars estimated yeah. is uh, something to give you pause. They'll buy a lot of gas. They'll buy a lot of gas, yeah. but then of course, if you keep it for ten years, right. you can take it out to three thousand hours, and you had to overhaul the piston engine at least once, and yeah. all you know, okay, yep. it all comes down. So they're they're definitely just here to uh, handshake with the with the industry and mm -hmm. say they're there and show they're working on it um looks like a good group of people mm -hmm. um we'll see if they make it you i know, wish them well we've been looking for a, a good inexpensive yeah. uh turbine for a long time what is mm -hmm. what is it you know good cheap or uh, fast would pick two yeah yeah the engineering <laughs> circle good cheap fast pick any two yeah so mm -hmm. uh you know and, and certainly you know lightweight uh reliability yes. from lack of uh just simple lack of parts i mean right. the simpler the better uh, but the bugaboo has always been initial cost and fuel consumption, and especially profound in a light airplane where adding 20 or 30 gallons of fuel to make up the difference in range right. is, is not a small task. And the other thing a lot of people don't talk about is uh, it, it's, it's easy to get excited about the high power to weight, and there's a lot of performance here, but these are not low altitude engines. Uh, they, the turbine, no matter what you do, just does not really like to put around down low. Right. And so for going up high and going places, great. For yep. pancake chasing, maybe not so much. Well, I mean, that's something that came up with Paul Dye's uh, subsonics. I mean, his flight profile is basically get to the highest altitude possible as quickly as you can, because <laughs> right. he's watching fuel flow and there's not a lot of fuel on board. And then coast so. the rest of the and way. And coast Here's the rest of the way, way. exactly. Yeah. So anything else that uh, you saw that was interesting? Uh, those are the two deep ones that I uh, spent a lot of time on. Um, the rest I was looking for photos for the engine buyer's guide. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, we're going to uh, hop out of our rental car here and uh, enjoy the sunshine in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to have a, a number of more uh, features on kitplanes.com, a few more uh, uh, videos. Boy, my coffee is wearing off fast. And uh, we're looking to have a good time. Yeah. All right. See you next time. Blue skies. Yeah.